What if you were immortal? Not just hard to kill, but truly, fully immortal. What if nothing could touch you? Not even the butcher while you go AFK to make a sandwich or something with your own fresh meat. Ladies, gentlemen, and Harajim of all ages, recently I took advantage of the Mother's Blessing event and its lovely 35% bonus experience gain, and I got my Barbarian all the way from level 1 to 100 and got it absolutely fully and completely online. The main reason for me doing this is, while playing my Rogue, I had the Melted Heart of Selig Uber Unique drop, and after a full week of testing various options, I was just sort of disappointed by how that Uber Unique interacted with Rogue as a class, which left me with a goal. I wanted to experience the absolute height of Selig, and the height of this Uber Unique is quite simply barbarian. So I made my barb, I got it all set up, and created my own version of an immortal selling barb that still does so much damage that it pretty much just one-shots most enemies still in a tier 100 while being nigh on immortal. Basically, unless you just do stupid things like I did a few times purposely to test the limits of the tankiness by going AFK, standing in as much shit as I possibly could in a tier 100, other than that, you basically just cannot die. And honestly, what more could you ask for? For those of you here in the comments saying, well, what if I don't have selling? Well, don't worry, while well, today's build is an absolute showcase of one of the silliest combinations of synergies in the game as far as immortality and simultaneous damage output, you can quite easily fill the hole of Selig in this build, and what you get instead is much higher damage output, but with a bit less survivability. But the result is just a more defensively minded and focused version of a regular Hammer of the Ancients build, and, well, that is still something that is quite useful to have around for tougher content, like, you know, the stuff we have coming in just under a week now. All that said, let's dive into the meat of all of this, the skill points and where I've put them, our arsenal technique of choice, the legendaries and uniques that make it shine, the affixes that you want on your gear to support this as much as possible, the vampiric powers that make it even sillier, and then of course our paragon board setup. With this one, I'm extremely happy with the amount of goodness that we got from it that it pumps into the build, and so without further ado, let's dive on into the skill points themselves. Starting off with our basic skill, you are actually going to want lunging strike as this, with its enhancement and then also combat lunging strike too. This gives you a very solid basic attack with good forward momentum, which deals bonus damage and heals you a bit when hitting a healthy enemy, then also gives you a short duration berserking buff when it critically strikes, which is really great for us. Then moving on to our core skill node cluster, we just have full ranks in Hammer of the Ancients, as that is our main damage dealer. It just makes a lot of selling once you have these enhancements on it as well. Of course, it not only increases your fury generation after hitting with this skill, but also the skill does more damage depending on the amount of fury that you have when casting, meaning the higher that your maximum fury is, the more damage this skill will do. And with selling, the higher your maximum fury, the tank here you are, so of course they meld together very nicely as long as you have enough resource generation to maintain them. And, well, Barb is the class that absolutely does. On which note, we're also going to be grabbing three ranks of the Endless Fury passive here for a bunch of bonus fury generation from Lunging Strike as we use it with a two-handed weapon. Then we move on to our defensive skills here, and we're going to be grabbing Rallying Cry as well as his enhancement and also Tactical Rallying Cry. This is one of our shouts. We are, of course, going to be getting all of the shouts, and this is the one that specifically boosts your resource generation by a massive of amount, which as you may guess is perfect for Selig and also for Hammer of the Ancients. This also gives us Unstoppable when cast, which is useful too. Then we also get Challenging Shout here, along with its enhancement and also Tactical Challenging Shout. This gives us a taunt that also boosts our maximum life and gives us bonus fury when hit. Worth mentioning that as a baseline, Barb does generate fury when it takes damage, which automatically makes it an awesome pairing with Selig, as if you have enough resource generation as a stat, you can even out the damage intake hitting your fury with Selig, and generate as much fury when you get hit as you drain from selling absorbing the hit that you take. It's really nuts how good this combo can get if you do it right. Then we also grab some passives here, which is going to be three ranks of imposing presence for a bunch of bonus maximum life, then also three ranks of martial vigor for a good chunk of damage resistance against elites, which are honestly the most dangerous enemy type of the game, so this is super important to have. Then move on to the brawling cluster, and here we're going to be picking up Warcry, as well as its base enhancement, but nothing further than that. This shout gives us a damage bonus while active and also gives us four seconds of berserking. Then we just grab a ton of passives here in this cluster, three ranks of Booming Voice for an increased duration on our shout skills by a pretty reasonable amount, as well as three ranks of Guttural Yell, which just causes the enemies around you to do 12% less damage for five seconds after you use one of your shouts. Then we also take three ranks of Aggressive Resistance here for a pretty nice chunk of damage resistance while berserking. We also have bonus ranks of this from one of our uniques. Then we also get three ranks of Prolific Fury for a ton of bonus fury generation while we are berserking as well. After that, we head on over to the Weapon Mastery cluster to just take a bunch more 
passives once again. Three ranks of Pit Fighter here for a bonus to close enemy damage, as well as a damage reduction from distant enemies too, and then one rank of Thick Skin, mostly as a gateway to let us get three ranks of Defensive Stance for a good chunk of bonus damage reduction while Fortified, as well as two ranks of Counter Offensive for increased damage when we have Fortify for over 50% of our maximum life. Once we move on from that, we go to the Ultimate Skill Note Cluster here, and we're going to be grabbing Wrath of the Berserker as well as each of its enhancements, all in all giving us essentially up to a 14 second period of straight up berserking that will activate naturally with how we play, as well as activating Unstoppable for a few seconds too, increasing your movement speed, your fury generation, and the fun special synergy of boosting the damage bonus of berserking itself for every 50 fury that you spend while the skill is active. And yes, the damage intake resource drain of Selig does count, so you actually pretty immediately get this up to its maximum bonus against higher tier enemies. After that, we end off with some passives here, three ranks of Wallop for bonus damage with bludgeoning weapons against vulnerable enemies, and then three ranks of Brute Force for a massive overpowered damage bonus multiplier with two-handed weapons. Finally, we round off with our key passive itself, which is of course going to be Unbridled Rage. This increases the fury cost of our core skills, but also increases their damage dramatically. That covers our skill points then, so let's talk about our technique slot, and this is pretty simple. We use a two-handed mace for the vast majority of our actual damage, our actual output, and so that's just always going to be active. So we want our technique slot to be actually be the two-handed sword here, which is a constant bleed damage based on your output for every direct damage that you deal. This is both a very effective way of doubling down and getting a large chunk of bonus damage from the technique slot, while also using it to apply bleed, which can activate our damage reduction from and bonus damage to bleeding enemy bonuses, which is really useful to have. Moving on, let's talk about our legendaries and uniques then. Starting off, of course, we have Selig itself here. The main thing some of our synergies are built around and a massive aspect of our tankiness in general, this build is specifically tailored towards this uber unique, and this is essentially just the build to use if you have it. But if you want to play this style of somewhat more defensively leaning Hammer of the Ancients without Selig, pretty much all you really have to do is slot in the Banished Lord's Talisman instead. This thing about this build, it's just it still one shots the vast majority of enemies, even in a tier 100 with Selig, which means the bonus damage of Banished Lords is sort of excessive for anything other than boss killing. That said, it is still there, and the damage of it is nuts, which it's great for bosses or even larger enemies within dungeons. Past this, we also are going to be using the Ring of Red Fur. The ring itself has massive resource generation on it, more than average for a ring, which is fantastic for us. It's an extremely important stat, and it also has massive maximum fury increase, again, more than average for a ring. These are our best stats, so it's really good to have excessive versions of these affixes. That in itself makes the ring worth using, but then it also gives you a guaranteed crit with Hammer of the Ancients occasionally that also does bonus multiplicative damage and really helps skyrocket what this build can do. That said, this is the damage increasing use for this slot, and personally, I found this version of the build to be just about immortal in even tier 100 dungeons. But if you want to become even tankier and a bit more consistent on your general damage, while yes, lowering the potential of a singular hit, you want to instead slot in the Bold Chieftain's aspect, which gives you higher shout uptime in general by reducing the cooldown when you use your shouts near a bunch of enemies. Past that, we're also going to be using the Tusk Helm of Yorts the Mighty, Maximum Fury, Berserking Damage Bonus, Attack Speed, and three ranks of a passive skill that provides damage resistance is really tasty, but the effect itself gives you an up to 60% chance when regaining Berserking while already Berserking to give you an enhanced Berserk, increasing your damage done, your fury generation, and 10% cooldown reduction, which is a neat bonus on top of that too. Then our final unique is going to be Tybalt's Will, again, another source of bonus maximum resource, some more damage reduction, and of course, the extremely powerful bonus of when you go unstoppable and for four seconds afterwards, you gain up to 40% damage and give yourself a chunk of resource, both of which are incredible with the timings of this build and, well, the two sources of unstoppable that we have. After that, it is pure legendary aspects on our two-handed indulging weapon, of course, you're going to want to have Limitless Rage for a ton of bonus damage for every fury that you build above max before using a core skill. We constantly do this due to our silly fury generation stat. On your two-handed sword, we have the Edge Master's aspect for 40% bonus damage when at full resource, and of course, just for the sake of saying it, if you have the Grandfather Ubi Unique, just stick that thing in here. There's no extra consideration. This is the thing that you would place. On which note, we also have the Earth Striker aspect on one of our one-handed weapons. This just gives you a free overpower after swapping weapons back and forth a few times, which we do by having our basic skill using our two-handed sword and our core skill using our two-handed bludgeoning weapon. And again, just for the sake of saying it, this is what you would replace with Doombringer if you had it, as that also works extremely well within this build. Our final weapon aspect then is of course going to be the aspect of Ancestral Force, which gives Hammer of the Ancients more of an area of effect attack on its damage to make it easier to use in wave clearing scenarios. Past that, we have the aspect of Echoing Fury on our remaining ring, which gives us a nice chunk of fury generation per second while our shout skills are active. Then we've got the Relentless Berserker aspect as well on our gloves, which gives you a up to 40% 
like you hit a chance to extend the duration of berserking when you hit an enemy with a core skill while you're already berserking. We've also got the disobedience aspect on our chest for all that lovely bonus armor. Then finally, we have the ghost walker aspect on our boots as our mobility aspect that gives us bonus movement speed and lets us walk through enemies while unstoppable and for a few seconds afterwards as well. As far as the actual affixes that you want on your gear then, resource generation and maximum fury is your absolute highest priority on everything that you can get it on. Crit chance is pretty important as well where you can get it. Overpower damage is absolutely extremely important on this because it's just this build has a ton of forced overpowers and the way that that stat scales is really lovely. It's a really high value affix if you can trigger it. Then we also want to aim for damage while berserking on your rings and weapons wherever possible as we also double dip in that stat for multiple different damage bonuses. On top of that, you also just want to have your general standard crit damage, vulnerable damage, your main stat, and of course your four bonus ranks to hammer the ancients on your gloves too. For defensive skills, you mostly just want some standard stuff. Our resource gen is basically a bonus defensive stat in this build, but you also want damage reduction, damage reduction from close enemies, bonus total armor percentage wherever you can find it, and a fun one for your boots specifically is actually damage reduction while injured. The way this build works, you should never actually get one shot, which means even if you just play normally, you will always wind up injured before dying because we just generate so much fury that it mitigates a ton of the damage even while being completely overwhelmed. But then the idea here is that it, if you hit the threshold of injured, which is 35%, then this will kick in as a bonus 43% damage reduction that applies instantly, which then applies reducing the resource cost of Selig every time you get hit and lets you get very naturally back up to a higher health point just because the damage intake drops so harshly when that happens that your resource generation will actually essentially just count as creating a significant more amount of tankiness as damage reductions apply through Selig. Think of Selig essentially as just using your resource pool as a bonus barrier. That's how it tends to function with most things, and so this is actually a really powerful little interaction right here. That covers it then as far as gear then, so let's talk about our vampiric powers. We're of course going to be grabbing Hemomancy, as you'd probably expect, for a pulse of damage every four seconds for 80% of our maximum life that also does heal us a good chunk when it happens. We also have Resilience, which gives you 1% damage reduction for every two 2% life you are missing. Stack that up with our damage reduction while injured to make you become even more unkillable as you start actually losing health, adding greatly to our immortality. Then we use Blood Boil, which creates a little globs on the ground for you to run over for bonus damage after you get an overpower, but more importantly, it gives us a free guaranteed overpower once every 20 seconds. Then our last two of them are a combo, Prey on the Weak for a load of bonus damage to vulnerable enemies that also makes any enemy that has Vampiric Curse also count as vulnerable. Then we have a Cursed Touch for Lucky Hit Chance to apply Vampiric Curse with any attack as well as just a general damage increase to the soul explosion part of that mechanic. Then finally, of course, let's go over our Paragon board for the day. On the starting board, you want to head up the left side, grabbing the defensive rare magic nodes, of course, continue to the glyph socket, and here you want to put in the crusher glyph. This gives you bonus damage with two-handed bludgeoning weapons and also a bonus damage multiplier to overpower damage done with maces. You want to grab the strength needed nearby to activate the secondary effect, as well as both of the rare nodes here. Then you want to progress up the right side to get to the board attachment gate and stick on the bone breaker board with the legendary power in the bottom left side. You want to head directly there, stopping to grab the nice damage reduction while fortified rare note along the way, and then once you get to this legendary power, you'll just essentially get a free guaranteed overpower once every 12 seconds, which is very solid. From there, you want to head up the right side through the lovely maximum life rare node to get all the way over to the glyph socket itself, and on this board, you want to slot in the martial glyph for a good bonus to all the magic nodes in the radius, as well as a cooldown reduction to your shout skills anytime you use a different one of your shout skills. Of course, from there, you want to grab the rare nodes in the radius as well as just enough strength to activate the glyph. Then you want to head out the right side of the board and attach on the carnage board here with the legendary node on the right side. You want to head directly to the glyph socket of the board and in here we're slotting in the ire glyph, which gives you bonus damage while berserking. Again, the thing that we double dip on and the additional bonus is while berserking, you take 10% reduced damage from elites, which is of course fantastic. Again, grab the rare and magic nodes within the radius as well as just enough strength to activate the board and make sure that you grab these damage while berserking bonuses because again, we double dip on these, they're very valuable. Then you want to head down and left to get a little bit cheeky and pick up a nice little bit of 30% cold resistance and some armor, just to even out our resistances just a little bit. After that, you want to head down to the board attachment gate, and here you're going to stick on the Warbringer board with the legendary power on the top right corner as well as the glyph socket. You want to actually head directly towards the legendary power itself, going through the maximum fury, rare, and magic nodes, which is of course, again, a really good stat for us. Then you just travel all the way to the legendary node itself, which gives you a lovely amount of fortify from your max life for every 75 spirit that you spend. And yes, once again, selling draining your resource when you get hit does actually count for this, which is a fun little synergy here. After that, you want to head back to the start of the board and instead go right to the glyph socket where you'll want to slot in the wrath glyph here, which gives you bonus
bonus damage with critical strikes, as well as some fury regeneration whenever you crit against an enemy, which is quite lovely too. Grab the rare and relevant magic nodes in the radius, as well as enough dexterity to power the glyph, then head down and right to the board exit, and here you want to stick on the Blood Rage board, with the legendary power being all the way on the bottom left. You want to progress towards that legendary power specifically, stopping to get the bonus damage while berserking, rare and magic node along the way, just because they're convenient, and once you get to the node itself, the legendary that is, you'll have the bonus, which is killing a bleeding enemy, has 10% chance to grant you berserking for 5 seconds, and your damage is increased by 25% of your damage while berserking bonus. Just permanently, this is a bonus multiplier to all damage based on your damage while berserking bonus, which is why we stack that stat as hard as we do whenever we can. After that, you just want to head around through the side to the glyph socket itself, where we're going to be slotting in the mortal draw glyph. This increases the damage of skills that swap weapons. So anytime that you use Hammer of the Ancients after a lunging strike, and generally that is the ideal flow here, you don't really want to use Hammer of the Ancients twice in a row, so this will just happen sort of naturally, and well, it works perfectly as a result. Of course, the secondary effect, of course, is skills that swap weapons also gain a bunch of bonus crit chance, which is lovely for us too. We then grab the relevant rare magic nodes in the radius and just enough dexterity to power the glyph, then we want to head back up to the carnage port specifically and actually progress through the right side to get more damage while berserking nodes because again, these are incredibly good and progress out of the right side of the board, attaching on our final board, which is decimator with the glyph socket on the left side. You want to progress directly to this glyph socket, which we're going to be sticking in the undaunted glyph. This gives you bonus damage while well fortified. We will stay fortified more often than most people would because you don't lose fortify through selling damage, so you will just stay in this fortified state pretty constantly. You also gain a bonus damage reduction based on how much fortify you have. This is essentially a separate damage reduction multiplier from damage reduction while fortified, and so it is actually very powerful to have. Then you also want to grab the one little bit of damage reduction for vulnerable enemies from this rare node here, but we don't grab the other one just because we don't have the points. You want to grab just enough willpower to actually activate the glyph on your way to use your final points to get our final thing here, which is the legendary node of the board. Each time you make an enemy vulnerable, your damage is increased by 10% as a multiplier for five seconds. If you then also overpower a vulnerable enemy, this will grant a different 10% bonus for five seconds. So you can have two separate bonus 10% multipliers from this, which we do just sort of have active constantly. It's really, really solid. And that just about does it as far as every aspect of how to put this build together. As far as to actually play the build, then this one is really quite simple. You want to use Hammer of the Ancients when you're at maximum fury, use your shouts and lunging strike to build fury. You become immortal for all actual practical purposes while still being capable of doing upwards of 50 million damage in a singular hit. So you hit this just absolutely ridiculous nexus of tankiness beyond all belief, while also having insane damage potential at the same time. It really is just sort of the perfect build right now, in my opinion. I hope you've all enjoyed this then. Let me know your own thoughts on it. And hey, if you have Selig yourself, maybe give this a try. If not, maybe let this be your inspiration to continue your search for this glorious amulet. Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye